Hello. Uh, yes, I, I'm just Stefan. My name is Wirtel, but I like Stefan, just that. Um, this talk is just about, um, first, it's a real pleasure to present my experience to you because uh, sometimes uh, I don't like to expose something. Uh, firstly, it's my first talk about Django. I, I'm not a fan of Django. I prefer Flask, but because uh, I signed a contract with Django, for Django, but I uh, started to use Django. Uh, I'm not an expert, just a newbie, a beginner. Uh, if you have some advice, you can give me, a, you, you can send me a, your message. Uh, about the rest, uh, wait, yeah. Yes, only develop some backends, web services with Python, of course, and Sync.io, maybe with Golang or Erlang. It's my biography. Uh, on the left is just a draw of my daughter. You can see there is a big uh, snake uh, on the center. It's me, I am a Python lover. Uh, of course, I use open source, I develop open source. I, uh, open source is just my life since 20 years. And I just created the Python for them. You can come for the next year. And what else? Uh, yeah, I am a member of the PSF of EPS. I receive a CSI from the PSF because I just created the Python for them. Uh, yes, just that. So for presentation, I need a use case. And in this case, in this talk, sorry, I'm going to use the EuroPython website, OK? Uh, I appreciate the work with, which has been done by the current developer of uh, EuroPython website. We know EuroPython is just an awesome project. We are there. That really, that's really awesome. Because without EuroPython or PyCon, uh, Python is not the fabulous project. Um, thank you. <laughs> so this event is, has been organized by some people. And these people, the organizer, are the main developers of Python, of EuroPython, sorry. Uh, we have some war groups in EuroPython. We have the financial group, the support group, and of course the marketing group. And there is the web team group. I am in this war group. My first contribution to the website was in 2007, uh, 2015, sorry. I'm not French, I'm not English. And when I have time, I contribute to the project, but when I have time. And maybe that's the main reason why I'm not a big contributor. But this, this year, uh, just explained that I signed a contract to, a develop, to be a Django developer. Okay, I'm a, normally I'm, I am a Python expert and I know Flask. Maybe Django is not really difficult, okay? So, if you want to read the source code of your Python, the website, you can go on this address, okay? First, you can contribute. So, EuroPython, the, the website of EuroPython is not just a facade, it's not just a, a small site where you can see the speaker or just the attendees and the rest. With EuroPython, we can do the conference management. We can manage the tickets for the assign and unassign or just offer tickets. You can come. We can do some statistics about the attendees, the speakers, and the rest. We can also make the invoices or just the refunds. Oh, I cannot come. Can, I, can you refund me? OK, maybe. When you send an email to the support because you have an issue with one person or because you have uh, another problem, whatever, uh, there is the help desk, and this help desk will use your Python, the EuroPython site. Sometimes you receive some notification by email. We don't use any other system, any external system. Don't, we don't use AWS or just uh, MailChimp. But sometimes, and you don't know that, but with the last version of EuroPython, uh, we can do uh, the booking for the rooms, for the hotel, and of course for the SIM cards. But we try to remove this card because uh, it does not work. But yes, we can do that. So the website, EPCon, is a real good tool 
because it's not just a, a simple website. It will handle the, the invoices, the refunding, and the rest. But sometimes we need to do the state of the union. Firstly, we use Python 2.7. The support will, st will stop in 2020. And we use Django 1.8. No? Okay. The, the last migration to the Django 1.8 has been done in the last year, during the last uh, Europe item. Uh, we use some dependencies. But these dependencies are just broken with the new version of uh, Django, or there's no maintainer. That's very boring. Of course, we use SQLite. Sorry. The best is just after. We have no test. <laughs> <laughs> Can you start and come back? Yeah. Uh, we have 100 or 200 files and 27,000 lines of code and no test and no documentation. Uh, sometimes we can read, and you can check in the source code, the comments are just in Italian. Adesso posso parlare un po' italiano, sì. We are just some English speaker, uh, that's right. And we understand English, or French, or Italian for all. Okay. Sometimes we can see in the source code of your Python uh, some parts of the code. The code is just duplicated, or we can ha see some dead code. Why? Because um, during the migration from the last, uh, I come, I, I, sorry, for the history. The previous version of EuroPython, the EuroPython site was based on the PyCon Italia site. That's the reason why we have the comments in English, uh, in Italian, and they use several applications. With the new version of EuroPython, we just merged them, okay? And that's the reason why we have some duplicated code. Of course, no async asynchronous, no continuous integration, sorry, and no API for the external tools. Or, in fact, we have nothing, okay? But, uh, and no syslog, of course. <sighs> yes, the settings are coded. I think we have a problem. But seriously, I, I think we are not alone in this case because I'm a freelancer of, with Python. And when I go in some companies, I can see the same case. No documentation, no continuous integration server, in fact, nothing. Uh, yes, it works, okay, sure. But don't forget one thing. Because we are at Europe Python, Europe Pythons are started in 2002, and uh, since the beginning, we have a lot of former developers. In reality, 31 developers. The, secondly, we are some volunteers on the free time. Just that. We are not paid for that. It's not the case for the companies. And we are not web dev, just data scientists, back end dev. Uh, we try to, to fix the issues. Okay? From that, I think we have a real challenge. Maybe a small, maybe a big, but we have a real a challenge. The first challenge is to have a continuous integration server. Okay, we can install GitLab, we can use in GitLab, or maybe Travis. We will see that in the future. We need documentation, not in Italian, maybe in English. Uh, why not in Flemish? English is better. Uh, for the configuration, that's really important because currently the settings are just arcaded in the source code. That's very boring when you want to, to move from the production to the staging to the production server. Not very funny. We need some tests. Maybe refactoring the dead code. 
remove them. Of course, improve the quality of the code, just that. That's very important, the profiling. Sometimes we develop some application with Django, but we don't use some tools, some funny tools. We need to improve the deployment. I don't know for you, but I need some companies, they copy some script from a YKI, wiki, sorry, and they passed all the lines in a shell because they don't know Fabric, Un Ansible, or Solstack. And we need to monitor everything. The website, uh, is responding or not to the database, there is a shutdown or not, everything. About the continuous integration, um, we have good news. I have good news. I started to use Travis, just a configuration. It's not really difficult. Okay? For the documentation, what's the best project we want? Maybe things. I like things because we have the, st the syntax and we can extend it. And because we have a lot of plugins for Django. Uh, about the configuration, we can start to, to change the source code and just you or just use django.end. That end is just a small file where you, you put your configuration. You can see that in the part of the top where you give the, 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 the configuration for PostgreSQL, for the secret, for the, the debug environment, and the rest. And in the bottom, it just lines of code that you have to put in your manage.py. That's very funny. With that, you don't need to change your configuration with the settings.py. I have seen some developers, they comment the source code, the settings, and try to use the other part. For the test, please, just please, use unit test or pytest. Don't try to make your own framework. I see that. That's very funny. Um, it's just. Hmm? Only PyTest. I use PyTest. And I'm going to show you that because yeah, there is a funny, uh, good project, PyTest Profiling. But please use a framework. It's a basic requirement. And don't believe that your code is just perfect. We are humans, and the human make a lot of error in this life, of course. So. When we create some test, how to create a test? We create a function for the test, and after we implement the code. But we have a legacy code, it's not the case. You have the legacy code, and you have the test. You want to, try to write the test. Maybe you can write the test in function of the code coverage of your application. In this case, you can use coverage, or just if you are using PyTest, pytest.cov. That's true just for the source code. But sometimes you are using some templates. And in the templates, you are not sure that your template is just used with the right function. Example, you want to add a new parameter to your new, uh, an endpoint, and you have to check all the templates. OK, you can, you can try to create a test for each template. But there is a plugin for that. Django coverage plugin. This small plugin will analyze the, the template. It will give you a to, uh, just a small report. OK, there is an error in this case. Just that. Uh, because we use the version, the version 1.8, since this version, the migration engine of Django will execute all the migration files. And sometimes, that's very really boring, but with a big B, because the test will take two seconds and the migration two minutes. With just this plugin, uh, we can disable the migration. When you try to write your test, that's just more important, uh, that's better. For the rest, we have some models, I suppose. Who use the fixture? Bad. Sorry. Yes? That's bad. Why? Because we have a static file. And when we update the model, we had a new field. You have to update your fixture. I don't know for you, but in the companies where I work, 
they try to, to implement a small script where it will put some values for the new field. In my case, I just use factory boy. Create a factory for the model. And from that, I can implement uh, a new instance of my model. <sighs> just when you write the code, on, or when you want to refactor your code, you can use PyFlake or just PyLint, just some linter where they tell you where you have an error in the source code. For example, you, don't, you just forget to declare a variable. You use a variable, but this one is not really, it's not in the source code. Uh, when you develop, you can use Django PDB. When you have an exception, automatically PDB will start, it's a post-mortem, but automatically it will start on this line where you have the issue, the exception and you can start to debug. Don't use print. Print it just for the, the, the beginners. It's my case. Um, if you are using PyTest, I'm going to use PDB PP because PDB or IPDB just don't, does, not work, uh, does not work with uh, PyTest. Of course, because I'm a contributor of CPython, CPython 3.6 and 3.7, I like to use MyPy. And we can use MyPy. MyPy is just a small tool where we can check uh, the source code, we can create an, an analyze of the source code and give so a report where, okay, uh, this variable is just a string, but you want to assign an integer. It's not correct. And MyPy can give us uh, a report where we have the duplicated code or just the duplicated function. We can use Autoflake. Autoflake is just a tool where it will remove the unused import files from the source code. And for the import, you can use iSort. iSort will, in function of your configuration, will sort the input, the, the import side uh, by three groups. For example, for the standard library, for the intern, uh, yeah, standard library, uh, the external library, Django and uh, whatever, and your own library. Okay? Uh, maybe Django debug toolbar. Uh, do you know how they debug or profile an application with Django? And my team, ah, before I was a leader, um, they take time, the start time, and they make the difference between the start and the stop. Just that. But we don't know the number of uh, queries in the database, and about the CPU, we have nothing. It's very interesting. I use it. I don't know for you. Um, when you run the server, with a run server. Uh, you can use Django, uh, Django dev server, and the line profiler plugins, where you will uh, get a small report for the profile, uh, uh, of the profiler. And for each line, we, get, we will get uh, the result for each line. Okay, this line has to, has to, uh, takes two minutes, or two seconds, sorry, and the next line will take uh, one milliseconds. That's really important. Um, yes, for you. PyTest profiling. PyTest profiling is just a, a wrapper around C profile, but it has two interesting features. The first one is just profile SVG. Uh, with this feature, it will create an SVG file and will generate the lines where you can see a uh, uh, sorry, excuse me. You, you will have a file, a prof file, where you can execute a tool to show you the, a graph with the, du the duration, the calls, the number of calls, the times in the, the application. And you can use the second parameter, just durations. Duration will, create, will write a report where you have, in this case, just the two slow worst functions in your source code. I like that because sometimes we can have this graph. Hmm. I don't know for you, sometimes you have a function, you think it's a, 
CPU bound, but in fact, maybe there is a problem with this NKO, with the, the IO. Uh, in my case, that was just a problem with my network. So, so uh, I'm going to continue with the profiling. We can use C profile V. C profile V is just a web interface for the prof files. Uh, you can see just a, a small screenshot where we have all the, the stack trace and the calls for each function and the times. Just need to install it with, uh, with pip install. So for the deployment, we're using Docker and we use Docker Compose. But maybe in the future I would like to use Kubernetes or Docker Swarm. Because if we implement a new feature, we want to see it before to put it in the production server. Because we are some developers. For the monitoring, I would like to use Sentry because currently we receive an email, just an email, and we have no statistics about this exception, nothing. Sentry is really, really, really a good tool for that. Maybe use Supervisor, Supervisor, Supervisor D, sorry, or just uh, Kubernetes or the course one because it can restart if there is a crash of the process. And for the rest, Najos or Shinken. So, next point is just the state of the onion after this refactoring, because I did it. Um, I, I have added Travis. We have some tests, 97 tests. It's not really big, but uh, it's not better than zero. Uh, we have code coverage, 32%. 32% on 27,000 line of code, that's good, uh, in one week. I think it's good. Started to port uh, the database to PostgreSQL. The source code start to be compatible with PostgreSQL. And of course, uh, sometimes I use the profiling because I have observed some difference with the speed and function if we use SQLite of PostgreSQL. Next step, just, just uh, add the documentation, remove the dead code, move to the last version of Django, Django 2.0 or 1.11. I prefer Django 2.0 because we will remove the support of Python 2. Of course, Python use Python 3.6 because we have some improvement and mainly with the last version of Python, Python uh, 3.7 in some months. Use Postgres because Postgres is Postgres, just pe the perfect database for me. Use Celery. Maybe we will provide some API because currently, uh, you know why the schedule in your application is not uh, synchronous, synchronized with the, with the website? Because every day we just export the schedule from the database to uh, the application. Hmm. And maybe create a single page app. So, there is an expert, a Django expert in the room because maybe we need your help. Yeah. Because uh, we are volunteer, we don't have a free time, we are not paid for the EuroPython site, it's just on the free time. But maybe we, you have a better experience than me. How to contribute? During this weekend, we will do a sprint code. Please, come on, please. <laughs> I don't want to be alone. Okay, please come. Join the web team. And if you are better than me, please share your best practice. You have a survey, you can go, just read it. It's tinyurl.com slash jungle dash best dash practice. And if you have a question, there's a, time, there's a moment. Who has a question? Uh, this talk is just my experience in one month. Okay, I never used Django before. I'm, I don't know if I had the right uh, the, the right practice for the, the project, but in my case, because I already used some other uh, tools in the past, uh, just use these tools. 
Okay. No question? Yes, just one. I'm in time. Oops, hi there. Uh, so first, you can run PyTest with IPDB, just minus test or minus minus capture equals to no, which will, won't redirect the STD out, so everything's working with PyTest and IPDB. And second, uh, have you considered the whole team to use at least some Django CMS or Wagtail as base on top of which you can build the conference thing? For the second question, we use Django CMS. All right. For the first, sorry, can you repeat? There was a slide that you said you, you cannot run PyTest with IPDB mm -hmm. because you get some strange event loop error. But when you I can with a certain flag. Maybe you can show me because when I, I started to use uh, IPDB with PyTest, uh, I don't know why, but sometimes uh, I get some re some error in my console. But um, if you have a solution, I'm ready to. Well, maybe the tests were failing, but yeah, we'll, we'll fix it. Okay. This. Another question? All right. I think we've got time for one more. I'm sorry. We've got time for more questions. So. Ah, all right. Um, as far as eliminating dead code, there's a very good tool called Vulture. Um, it doesn't catch absolutely everything for obvious reasons, but um, it does catch an awful lot of stuff. It does um, static code analysis on the code base. Um, so uh, that should be useful. Can you show me because... Uh, yeah. Hey, come on. All right, do we have a question that is a question? Uh, yeah, there is Vulture, just forget to explain it. But uh, yeah, it's a good project also. also. Thank you. <laughs>